You heard this morning uh, David Martin um, make some comments around the, the, the listening that uh, MCEC staff and uh, executive council members uh, made and uh, Arlie did um, a survey with a number of congregations in MCEC as well. And some of the feedback that we got was we need to reach out, we need to get to know our neighbors, um, and we don't know how to do this. And so one of the ways that we have, um, are beginning to learn uh, and it's called relearning community. And this is a, has been a two-year journey. It is not about Mennonites being able to, with the right Mennonites' names, and to be cozier and more comfortable and really learning how to be community together. This is about taking what we already know how to do as a people, as a Mennonite people, for generations, and to begin to include others in our community. That's the relearning part. And there's another relearning piece, uh, at least uh, from, from my experience with relearning community, and that is that we've also specialized in discipleship as Anabaptist Mennonites, often expressed in, uh, in ethics and social act activism. And good as that is, what we haven't been as good at is disciple making. That, that disciple making is part of being a disciple and of discipleship. And that's what relearning community is also helping us to rediscover, to recover, and learn how to do. That, that inner transformation of ourselves as disciples who are disciple makers. There have been eight churches that have been on this uh, um, initial journey. We refer to them as the cohort one. And Sean East is here somewhere. Sean? Way at the back, sure, Sean. <laughs> um, and Sean is just going to come up and uh, share briefly, Sean, as a pastor, uh, about what the relearning community has been for West Hills Fellowship. Why do I feel like briefly is the word that precedes everything that I have to come up here and say, it seems. <laughs> I'm going to symbolically remove this because I'm speaking to you today and right now as the pastor of West Hills, not as the financial manager of MCC. In trying to be brief, I want to read to you an email from somebody in my congregation who's involved in uh, a disciple-making group that we have been working with as a result of the training from Relearning Community. And this is an email that I got from him just this week. He wrote to the group that's meeting together and he said, I wanted to thank everyone last night for getting to the root of my fear of salvation and trying to earn my faith. I've been praying about this for a long time and I feel like my prayer was finally answered last night. Right now I feel like a destructive cancer has been cut out of my life. The thought process that I have been stuck in has caused me to work so hard to try and have the right theology. But the reality is, in the back of my mind, I was always terrified that my theology might be wrong. I also found myself working so hard to not sin that when I would inevitably fall, I would be devastated and it would bring up those fears again. This morning, that anxiety that I spoke about last night is gone. I have not experienced a sense of freedom like this in a very long time. Thank you for your willingness to be used by God last night and feel comfortable enough to ask me questions and challenge the way that I think about this. This is from someone who's been a Christian probably for 20 years, who has said, done, and I experience him as someone who is trying to live a life for Christ and do the right things. And what relearning community has meant to us more than anything else is getting back to being intentional about what it means to be disciples and to make disciples. It's to stop operating under the assumption that if I preach a good enough sermon or we teach a good enough Sunday school class or we give somebody a good enough book that the result of that information will be disciples. 
It turns that notion on its ear by asking us not just to share potlucks, which are lots of fun, and not just to share fellowship, which is great, but to actually live life together on a journey of understanding what it means to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. Throughout all of this, I've been a Christian since I was in my early 20s. I was a CFO for 13 years and then became a pastor. I promise this will be the last thing I say. As we were going through this material, I came to realize that I primarily experienced God as someone for whom I needed to do work. And that the only way that I could experience God loving me was if my work was successful for him. And what I came to realize as we're going on this journey and learning what it means to be a disciple was that although the work is important and although sometimes it seems like it's never done, that God loves me because of who I am and because of who he made me to be, not because of what I do. And that's the kind of attitude that we want to look outward to our community with and carry with us to our soccer games and our hockey tournaments and our other endeavors, so that people can understand not what they have to do to be accepted by Christ, but to understand how much the God out there loves them and how much the power of Christ can change who they are because of who God made them to be. Thanks. Amen, thank you, Sean. Sean and uh, West Hills Church is, are part of the first cohort in Relearning Community. And uh, a second cohort uh, is on the journey as well. And uh, David Dyke, uh, pastor of, uh, at, at the Leamington United Mennonite Church, is a part of that cohort. And I've asked uh, David to say a little bit about uh, what, what he's excited about or what his hopes are for Relearning Community in his congregation. Leamington United Mennonite is uh, an 80-year-old congregation uh, here in Leamington. I um, was introduced to the uh, relearning community uh, last year at this uh, very event, uh, the gathering at Rockway Mennonite High School. And um, the, the thing that really stood out for me at that gathering was how the whole day was about personal testimonies, people sharing their faith, their personal faith with Jesus and the difference it was making in their lives. Uh, this struck me as something new. Uh, people being explicit about something that we take for granted as Mennonites, that preceding all of our mission and our ministry, there's a relationship. There's a personal relationship. And those stories were wonderful in the way they conveyed that. Well, part of that conference was also uh, to talk about relearning, and that's what caught my attention. This whole idea of discipleship and disciple-making, being disciples and making disciples. As a pastor, this is very close to my heart. We talk a lot about discipleship as Anabaptists, as Mennonites. It's such a big part of our DNA, a primary part of our vision statement. But I wondered to myself as a pastor, as a Christian, do we take a lot of this for granted? Does it all happen just because people show up at our church services, hear our sermons, attend our committee meetings, and go to Sunday school? My experience was telling me otherwise, that maybe it wasn't happening as much as we imagined. Even in my own personal life, I wondered, how am I growing as a follower of Jesus? Where am I being challenged? Where is the accountability in my life? I read a lot of books about it, but how is it actually being worked out in my daily life? That's why I'm grateful for relearning for 3DM, because it takes those questions very seriously. It is giving us as a church the vehicle to not only be disciples, but make disciples. It's raising the bar on what all this means, taking us out of our comfort zone, going into areas of our lives where we might not be comfortable. It also brings us together in community and huddles. And it, it is showing us how discipleship and mission are integrally linked. 
that one, the discipleship always precedes the, uh, the mission and the ministry. I appreciate that. I'm thankful to our leaders for uh, providing us with this initiative. And uh, we're just beginners. We're starting, looking forward to the next 18 months. Thanks. So, Brian, if there are others out there who now have questions, are, are excited about uh, relearning community and disciple making, what, what do they do? Uh, if your church is part of cohort one, could you stand and remain standing? If your church is part of cohort two, could you stand and remain standing? Look around. These are the people you need to talk to. It's not that they have all the answers. Uh, but you'll want to learn from them just why have you entered into this. Henry's pretty good if you want to approach Henry. Um, uh, you can also approach me, but I think more importantly to touch base with uh, congregations who are already doing this. We hope, you may sit down, we hope to be, um, our intention is to start a third cohort, uh, and we will, if there are four to eight congregations in a region, that are interested in uh, beginning this two-year journey, uh, we will come to you. It's no longer you come to us. Uh, the third stage is we come to you uh, and do the teaching. Great. Learn more about relearning. Thank you.